So I'm, I'm a punctual person, so it's hard for me to wait. <laughs> so uh, why don't we go ahead and uh, start with a prayer, and then we can start our study on John chapter 8. So I'll go ahead and pray. Lord, uh, thank you so much for this opportunity we have to share some time with our brothers and sisters in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. I'm so thankful for the technology you've given us so we can have this fellowship time together. Uh, guide our conversation tonight as we read your words from the Gospel of John and help us to, to, to glean some new information, some new insight that you would wish us to have through our conversation and our fellowship. And I pray all these things in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. So John chapter 8. Uh, I think uh, I'll just start. I'm going to read the first 12 verses, and then we can kind of go from there. All right. I'm going to read out of the NIV version. That's just what I have in front of me. So, But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. At dawn, he appeared again in the temple courts where all the people gathered around him, and he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now, what do you say? They were using this question to trap him in order to have a basis to accuse him. But Jesus bent down and started to write in the ground with his finger. When he kept on questioning him, when they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, If any one of you is without sin, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. At this, those who heard began to go away one at a time, the older ones first, until only Jesus was left with the woman still standing there. Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? Well, no, sir, she said. Then neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Go now and leave your life of sin. So what are your thoughts on, on this little bit of scripture? Uh, Pastor, through this uh, passage, I am seeing the uh, universality of sin. What do you think? They are just relying on uh, the law of Moses. I think uh, they are observing the law of Moses uh, outwardly, but they forgot to search their heart. So we could see here the universality of sin that every man has a sinning nature. So that's why when the Lord Jesus asked them, them who have, no, who have not sinned, uh, at first to cast the stones at the woman, but nobody did it. Instead, they left a woman and gone far away. So it means they have their uh, guilt in their hearts before God. So that's why I am uh, seeing here in this uh, scenario. That's good. Anyone else? Let's see who else is on the line. Okay. It's too late. Okay. Well, I, I, you know, I the, the things I always uh, think about when I read this particular scripture is the fact that uh, 
Yeah, we're not supposed to condemn others for their sin. That's really the job of God. And we all have sin and, and fall short of the glory of God, right? So we we need to have compassion for those that have sinned. It doesn't mean we don't correct them, obviously, but we need to have compassion. And I think the compassion of Jesus in this story is is just an overwhelming thread uh, of, of this this compassionate forgiving savior that we have uh, when he was faced with a situation where they were trying to trap him no matter what he said they were going to accuse him either of being against the law of moses or being you know too strict and, and condemning this woman uh, yet he uh, diffuses that situation simply with a question uh, kip i would agree with you just in the sense that um uh it, Jesus is calling to mind their sins, and he, as God, is the only one that that knows, you know, the motive behind why people do what they do. Um, you know, so he he cuts cuts to the heart just by simply asking them a question, which condemns themselves. And I I find it interesting that not only do they lack compassion, but they are also very hypocritical because uh, if if they had truly wanted to follow the law of Moses, if she was caught in the very act, they would have brought the man as well, because he was involved in that sin just as much as she was. Um, and so, you know, G Jesus not only confronts their issue of um, uh, lack of compassion for her, uh, they, they didn't really care about righteousness. Their only goal was to uh, to trap him. And so he cut to the very heart of that. He he revealed their lack of compassion, compassion. He revealed their lack of, of uh, uh, or excuse me, not their lack, but their, their evidence of hypocrisy and using her as a, uh, kind of as a pawn, um, you know, and that's, that's not, that's not what God wants us to do. He does want us to confront sin. He wants us to deal with, with those sin issues. He wants us to, uh, um, uh, hold each other accountable, uh, but not in the way that that they did. Um, it, their goal was not righteousness. Their goal was not compassion. It was just purely, um, you know, to justify their own their own actions and to seek out a reason to to uh, to make an accusation against him. Um, now, by the way, it's also interesting. I've I've done. As a pastor, I've done some counseling. I mean, not not a ton, but I've done some counseling, and it's it is almost always um, much better to ask questions to allow self revelation than it does just to tell a person this is what they should think or what they should feel or what they should do. Um, if if you can ask a question in such a way that the person comes to their own conclusion. And their own conviction that doesn't mean you don't guide them it doesn't mean you don't instruct them from the scriptures but um you know jesus deals very specifically with cutting to this this heart issue uh they lacked compassion they were very hypocritical in uh, in their actions excellent any other comments before we move on I'm only going to move a little quick because we've got about 60 verses to get through in chapter eight. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's quite a bit. I was going to say when I when I saw this on the uh, on the thing, I thought, well, we could spend the whole evening just on the first 12 <laughs> verses. <laughs> oh, so true. And, and I, I don't want to rush it. If if we want to spill over and do the second half of this next month, that's okay with me too. But um, is there any, anything else that anybody would like to speak on with this? Uh, interaction Jesus had with the the crowd and the adul adulterous woman I guess not okay this, I, think pa I think I think Kip I think Pastor Larry is trying to say something I can see his his lips moving but I I can't I still can't hear him Pastor Larry I'm sorry yeah sorry Larry I I, I can't uh it's not coming through. We're not even getting it on the the CCC. Mm. Try 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 a. Uh, there I go. Yes. Go ahead. 
Are you talking? <laughs> He's just using that. his phone. Okay. <laughs> so I, as I um, uh, noted here that how Jesus was uh, so compassionate to the sinners, but he hates sinners. So did the sinners. Uh, this uh, woman caught in adultery. And he really said, go and see no more. He said, give me a chance. But he said, go and see no more. Okay. Yeah, I, I think that yeah. yeah, the compassion of, of Jesus is such a strong theme in this this story. So the expectation is still is still established. He can't continue living in sin. Well, that, that's no more. <laughs> go and sin no more, right? But go ahead, Larry. If you have more. Yeah, I think it, it's cutting in and out again on you. I'm, I apologize, my friend. So, okay. Uh, would anybody like to read verse 12 to maybe down to 20 or 13 to 20? 12. 12 to 20, sorry. Joy, you want to read it? Okay. When yeah. Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The Pharisees challenged him. Here you are appearing as, you, as your own witness. Your testimony is, inval is not valid. Jesus answered, even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid, for I know where I came from and where I am going, but you have no idea where I come from or where I am going. You judge by human standards. I pass judgment on no one, but if I do judge, my decisions are true because I am not alone. I stand with the Father, who sent me. In your own law, it is written that the testimony of two witnesses is true. I am one, I am one who testifies for myself. My other witness is the Father who sent me. Then they ask him, Where is your father? You do not know me or my father, Jesus replied. If you knew me, you would know my father also. He spoke these words while teaching in the temple courts near the place where the offerings were put. Yet no one seized him because his hour had not yet come. So, any uh, perspective on this? This is kind of an interesting little uh, interlude before he really gets into his fight with the Pharisees. So you can see that they're beginning to challenge him openly as he's trying to teach. So the 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 fight is is definitely on. They're they're looking for ways to trap him, uh, and this is just one this witness concept. We haven't heard from a uh, Joel or or Jaime. Is your line good enough so you can? Good morning to everyone or good day. I don't know what is <laughs> time there. It's always well, opposite. Uh, oh, good night. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, what I'm seeing here is uh, no matter. Uh, the Lord uh, is talking to them, yet because their their heart is blinded, they they are just looking for something that they could accuse of the Lord, but not of the things that the Lord is telling them. So that is maybe the the problem of the people, even though they are they know the the scripture, but because their heart is blinded, especially with their pride. They could not believe the Lord, even though the Lord is talking to them and telling them the truth. 
So what be, what blinded the 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 people, especially the Pharisees, is their heart, their pride heart, and not uh, accepting what the Lord is telling them or tes uh, testifying of them about the Father. So that is what I'm. Uh, and in, in relation to us, the application for this is maybe whatever the truth. Uh, or whatever the word of the Lord may be, if our heart is blinded, we do not, in the first place, the Pharisees do not believe him. So they are just looking, like uh, Brother Kip, they are just looking for something to, to, uh, know, to go against the Lord. So maybe in, for us, we could not believe the Lord unless our heart be opened and our mind be opened on what he is telling to us. That is my opinion. I, I think that's really good, Jaime. I, I think it, we, we sometimes uh, forget that they, they couldn't attack his message because obviously God's message was both logical to the human as well as practical. So they had to attack him in a different way. And so it's like, well, your, your, your message is not valid because you don't have witnesses for your for your validity of your message. And it was, it, it was a very interesting way they were trying to subvert him because they couldn't attack the message. And it, I think it's kind of like the modern Christian. We, 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 can't, we can't really deny the message that Jesus has given us in the Bible. So we, we try to say it doesn't apply to us for one reason or another. It's interesting though, because he just made the claim, he's the light of the world. And then their attack is, uh, instead of asking him, why, what do you mean you're the light of the world? <laughs> it's like, it's like, your, your witness is invalid. <laughs> their attack. <laughs> it doesn't count. <laughs> yes, yeah, so they can't fight with the message. That's the thing. Yes, that's true. If I could add just a, a little, I don't know, perspective or something, I, I think it's interesting that... Um, in the first 12 verses, you, you have Jesus uh, confronting each individual on an individual level by simply asking them, he who is without sin, let him cast the first stone. And then they have to come to a point where they realize, wait a minute, he knows that I'm, I'm sinning. How does he know that? Uh, well, he's the light of the world. Nothing is kept in the darkness, you know, by, by or from him, I should say. Um, I've always had a, a little footnote in this passage of scripture. It comes from Psalm 90 verse 8 and it says, you spread out our sins before you, our secret sins, and you see them all, Psalm 90 verse 8. And so it's interesting that when you, you know, when you and I walk into a dark room or, or, or to a dark area, the first thing that we want to do is shine some kind of a light so we're not tripping on something, falling on something, or here in Texas, if we're outside and it's night, stepping on a snake or, or something like that so uh you you want you want that light that's going to be able to um uh reveal whatever dangers might be there and so it, it, it as these two passages go together and he continues to build on this same idea they're going to try to attack his character they're going to try to attack his message and yet he is continuing to shine upon their motives his light, which is revealing their own darkness. And the only person that can remove that is Jesus, of course. Um, and, and so it, it just, I guess those are my thoughts as it relates to, you know, how this, this whole chapter kind of goes together. Yeah. No, it, it, it's, it's really nice to be able to see how it's being weaved together. Yep. Yep. Uh, uh, obviously, John is capturing this this day, which is really just one day. Yeah, and it's a it's it's really nice to see a kind of a full day of Jesus's life. We don't get that very often in the scriptures, but we mm -hmm. can see how it's building, and Jesus is leading them in the right direction. They just they can't see it. Yeah. Anybody else? We haven't heard from uh, Joel or Ferdinand. If you have something. Yeah, uh, Willie. I guess uh, Alex is online also.
I know some of you guys have bad connections, so I completely understand. But uh, so, well, pastors, I think it is very hard during uh, Jesus times to explain about heavenly matters. As you can see, many of the Jews they cannot find it easily to understand what Jesus is speaking. So maybe we are see, seeing here because of the absence of the Holy Spirit. That's why we find it hard to understand the Lord Jesus. But I think uh, most of them, after Christ's resurrection, uh, they remembered what Jesus said and they understood later what the Lord Jesus was saying on them. Even the disciples also, they find it hard to understand some words of the Lord Jesus. But, but after uh, we have the Holy Spirit, uh, they remember. They, they realize what really Jesus meant of his words. Yeah, it's, it's interesting to think about, you know, how many in this crowd or in other crowds when Jesus was teaching the temple are part of the Pentecost story or even the early church that comes later. We know that there were a, a lot of uh, Jewish believers in the in the early days of, of the church. There's even rabbis that, that became followers. Well, yeah, uh, rabbi, Pharisees. I mean, Pharisees. 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 So yeah, I think I think it's a very interesting point, Willie, that the, that it, these words that Jesus is speaking right now, they don't really understand what he means. But later, obviously after his death and resurrection, a lot a lot of people are going to be remembering some of these words and and understanding them finally, and that might actually be the one thing that that makes the difference in their lives, right? You know, Kip, to build on that idea, you wonder how many that are in this particular scenario or day uh, may have also been present at Jesus's baptism when they heard the father, you know, speak, this is my son, you know, in whom I'm well pleased. This is, you, know, you need to listen to him. And, and so you wonder if, if there were a few people, and again, we don't know, that's just a, that's just a question we don't have an answer to, but in the same way that some of these ended up becoming followers and were a part of the New Testament, you know, first century New Testament church, it's also possible that some that were here present listening to him preach the temple were also present even at his baptism and would have heard, um, you know, his heavenly father speak and, and give his confirmation on him. No, I think that's a great point, Gary, because it. We, we sometimes forget that this is a small area and there were lots of people from Jerusalem. It says right in the story of Jesus's baptism, a lot of people from Jerusalem were coming to John for a baptism and there would have been people there. The Pharisees even mm -hmm. would have been mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, they talk <laughs> and that, that yes. would have been a pretty <laughs> remarkable story. So I'm, uh, you would think that even if those that hadn't been there, a lot of people would have heard that occurrence. Maybe not yeah. believed it, but but heard yeah. of it. Yeah. 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 So one message I wanted to add is, so we just talk about connection with the Father. We always emphasize that. For example, verses 19, just reply, if you know me, you will know my Father also. So basically, always emphasize only so the Son, the Christ, you can have connection to God. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. I don't know if everybody could hear what, what Walter was saying, but uh, this idea that, you know, to know the Father God, it's really tough for us to know God. But because we can know Jesus through his story in the Bible, we actually can know God. We, we, can, we can embrace God as our, as our Father because of the testimony that Jesus has given us mm -hmm. in, in the Bible. And that's what he's saying right here. And I'm, I, you know they're missing it, but... We shouldn't miss it. You know, Jesus reveals the Father to us through his life. And, and that's, that's a really amazing thing. Anybody else? Okay. 
Let's go ahead and read uh, verses 21 to 30. You want to take that, Joy, again? Once more, Jesus said to them, I'm going away, and you will look for me, and you will die in your sin. Where I go, you cannot come. This made the Jews ask, Will he kill himself? Is that why he says, Where I go, I cannot come? You cannot come? But he continued, You are from below. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. I told you that you would die in your sins. If you do not believe that I am he, you will indeed die in your sins. Who are you? They ask. Just what I have been telling you from the beginning, Jesus replied, I have much, much to say in judgment of you, but he who sent me is trustworthy, and what I have heard from him I tell the world. They did not understand that he was telling them about his father. So Jesus said, when you have, lift, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he and that I do nothing on my own, on my own but speak just what the Father has taught me. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do what pleases him. Even as he spoke, many believed in him. You got converse right there. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess I I missed verse thirty when I was studying this earlier. Yeah, that the there are converts right as Jesus is speaking. So people are beginning to recognize and accept Jesus for who he is, which that's you know it, it, it's an amazing story. Any insights? Anybody that hasn't spoken? I mean, you look like you want to say something. Well, I, I'm just uh, looking at the verse at verse 30. That as the Lord is uh, talking, many believe on him. So maybe uh, by this time only they have come to their mind and they were given understanding. That is why, not, not, although not all, but many believe on him. So it is the word of God. It is the very word of the Lord Jesus Christ that could give understanding to the people. And so many believe on him. So we need the word of God. We need the we need just to listen to the word of God, to the word of the Lord, so that uh, eventually we will be in, in union and we will believe. That is what I am. Uh, uh, that is what I am uh, seeing here. You want to hear? You want to hear the Lord? Read your Bible. That's the word of God. <laughs> Amen. Yes, that's true. That's true. You want to hear it audible, that you can hear it for years. Go, go play it, or let read it, read it with your voice. Read it, <laughs> read it out loud. loud. Yeah, that's, that's the joke <laughs> yeah. I used last so, week, last yeah. month, right? That's no, I think that's, that's really good, Jaime. I, mean, I, I think uh, the spoken word of God, which we have in the Bible, is 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 really all we need to believe, and that's what we need to to yes. really remind. People. Uh, that's one of the things we're, we're going to talk about in the message we're doing for the youth camp is the fact that knowing your Bible is, is how we have victorious life. That's how we learn how to live the way Jesus wants us to live. And and his word is, is so compelling that we're, just with this little story, people believe when they were in front of him. Uh, and uh, you know, I think that, that is, that's a message that holds true today. Yes, that's true. That without the Bible, we cannot know God and we cannot even understand. So we need we need the written word today. Yes. yes. Oh, definitely. Anyone else? I can see your face, Larry. I just can't hear you. I can kind of read your lips. 
My question, Pastor. Uh, which do you think is uh, which of the two scenario which you can easily understand the word of God? Is it during Christ's time or it, is it during in our period under the Holy Spirit? Hmm. Well, if I can uh, relate to that, during the time that the Lord Jesus Christ is, was here, he is not talking of his own. He is he he always uh, told the people that he is he is talking by the Holy Spirit. So it will be the same. It is not different. The Lord Jesus Christ Himself, though He was in the flesh, He is talking by the Holy Spirit. So as we today, although we are we have not the Lord Jesus Christ personally. In physical but still the holy spirit is talking to us through his word that is why the word the lord jesus christ told us that when he when he depart the holy spirit will remind us whatever he had told us it is all for me it is the same the holy spirit is still working i i have to agree with you Jaime. and it's 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 the word of god is meant to be written on our hearts so the holy spirit can uh, speak to us. You know, that's how we actually can hear God is we, the fact we have the Holy Spirit. That's that's the helper that Jesus promised us when he departed. And, I, you know, I think this scripture has probably convicted many with the Holy Spirit since Jesus. But, it, you know, when I look at this, I, I, I view this as, as people who are actually being uh, convicted and, and converted to followers of Jesus at the moment he was he was speaking. I can hear you, Larry. Yeah. Very, very, very difficult. Uh, yeah, I said before to you that you shall die in your sins. So if you delay it not, so people are born in sin. So I need to hold on to other things and do not feel to do this, we will die in our sin. If all things must be dealt with mother's connect. And those who die in this infant have to pay for their sins in hell. But if we have our sins filled now and decided death by trusting in Jesus and what he did to save us, we can avoid dying in our sins. Well, I agree. I mean, the, the 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 words that Jesus speaks to us is, have a great value. That's the reason they can move people, even in the midst of, of this story where Jesus was being confronted by people, and uh, you know all the onlookers are listening, and they're listening to the the people they revered in the Pharisees challenge Jesus, and in that challenge, Jesus reached their hearts, and I, I think that's that's kind of a powerful moment, even though we're in sin. Uh, Jesus can reach through our our doubts and and speak to us in that moment in a powerful way, uh, and this is just one example of that. Though though Jesus said the cause for that is you gotta believe him that he is who he is. What? <laughs> well, the same for us. Yeah. No, the, the word believe here. I just look it up. It's it's that same word business. Just it's business. it's more than just a, a head knowledge. It's that believe meaning you trust. You're, yeah, it's the same word when you, you get translated sometimes faithful or trust. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's true. Morning, morning, Paul. Hey, I'll just go ahead. You have it? Yes, yes. Uh, in addition to what Sister Judy said, uh, Jesus Christ is giving, his, giving the validity of his testimony as, as God. Yeah, in verse 23, 
He said, you are from below, I am from above. You are of this world and I am not of this world. So meaning, uh, he is really God, he is from heaven. And we are, uh, as people on this earth, uh, really, really sinners. So uh, he give the, the reality. Yeah, I, I kind of appreciate the way Jesus is building this through this this chapter you know, over his day. He's giving it to you light right now, and eventually he's going to give it to you. You can't refute it. I am who I am, right? Uh, but yeah, I think Alex is right. I mean, Jesus is making it really clear to those that are open to the concept. And I think that's probably the reason they're being converted to believers, because they're they're hearing it. And so, well, that makes sense. It, he He must be. You know the Messiah. He must be God. Go ahead, Lingmore. Hello. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. So I'm so I'm so amazed how the Lord Jesus Christ strike the balance between His humanity and divinity in these passages. You know, it's so hard for the Lord Jesus Christ to convince the Jews that He is God uh coming from god so he was actually explaining to them that though he is from above he is not um robbing the glory that is of the father so it's so difficult i think really it's really it's really amazing how the lord jesus christ handled these events you know um the jews are always uh tenacious of the law they know the law especially the Pharisees, that there is only one God. They are monotheistic by nature. They only know there's only, they only know that there is only one God. So it's so hard for the Lord Jesus Christ to claim divinity at this moment because the Jews are really, are really looking that there's only one Father at the, uh, God in, the, in, in heaven. So the Lord Jesus Christ here was really so cautious enough not to rob the glory that is of the Father. He is always pointing the people to the father as he also obey what the father is telling him but at the same time he is also saying that he is from above and he is always going down he is still going up there so this is how difficult the situation is for the lord jesus christ to balance but i know god can uh, jesus christ can really handle it because he is god in his divinity but to to proclaim that he is god and man at the same time to people is really hard even today uh, many people are still confused the, the, about the divinity of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we have a lot of people here in, in our place believing that Jesus is only man and he cannot be God. So it's so hard for them to believe, though they already have the Bible. So going back to the question before by Pastor Willie, was it really hard for the people before or now to believe that Jesus Christ is God? Well, it's even harder to believe today because we have a lot of of a lot of references now we are more confused today than the people before they only have one basis that is the law of moses but today we have a lot of basis for beliefs there is the google there is a lot of sometimes it questions the validity of the logic of the, the bible you have a lot of versions of the bible so people today are more confused and more knowledgeable that's why people today are more drifted away from the truth rather than the people before during the time of the lord jesus christ so here the lord jesus christ was really trying to convince the jews that he is god but he is pointing that the father is still over all because he will not forever stay on earth that's why he was always pointing to the father in his in his humanity he is always teaching them humility and obedience to the father because he knows that he will just stay here for some time at least 30 years old so uh uh, when he returns home, people would would be seeking where is the where is now the God. So that's why the Lord Jesus Christ is really pointing that the that the God is there up there, and I will be going up there. Thank you. That's good, Lamar. Good. Anybody else? Uh, can I add something? Go ahead. Uh, by this verse twenty three, he said that. I am from above and you are of this world. I am just uh, thinking 
God is so, yes, God is so awesome, God is so uh, humble that although he's too high, his uh, mind is too high, yet he, he go down uh, just to explain to us or to the people there what is, uh, what is the message of God. But as I am uh, thinking now, it's so hard for even us, it's so hard for the people with education to go down to the people who are ignorant and to tell them plainly what is the things. So they need to, they need first to, to meet in order for them to understand things. So how much more with God? That is why I remember in John chapter 3 that the Lord is saying to Nicodemus, I am talking to you about the things that are in heaven. Now that I am talking to you the things that are on earth and you are not believing and you cannot understand, how could you understand it if I am still TikTok, uh, telling you the things that are in heavenlies? So maybe the thing that uh, we need is really faith, not that we, not by means just of understanding. These Pharisees, they want understanding more than just believing. And the Lord, uh, like uh, Pastor Limar said, the, God is just uh, looking for, for the faith, not because we cannot understand all things. That is why uh, the God said, uh, the Lord said here in in the verses above, "You judge be, by means of your flesh." So we are just limited being. So we we really need the Holy Spirit to give us understanding and really need to believe in the word of God because by hearing we have faith so that is why uh, like uh, uh, Pastor Willie and Pastor uh, Lima said uh, maybe it's hard to, for us to understand without the Holy Spirit uh, helping us to understand that is my what I can say thank you well the thing with the scripture it's like understanding is not enough because you can understand it, but you can choose not to believe it. Kind of like I understand the concept of evolution, but I don't believe it. <laughs> it's kind of like that principle. You can you you may understand it, but not believe it. So it's it's it comes down to a choice again. It's would you believe what you're understanding or what you're reading, or would you not? I think that's that's always a challenge you guys have as pastors and and we as as lay people that you know how do you, we help people to have that understanding and the and the, the answer is we can't we can't help people only only god can actually do that the only thing we can do is actually live the life that god has laid out before us live as a christian what they used to call the way, right? the way of living that jesus has laid out for us and then our hope is that people will see that and will have the opportunity when our heart is softened to to uh, introduce them to the Jesus of the Bible in a way that they can not only understand but that they can believe because yeah there's 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 that difference if faith is what pushes you over the edge you can come up to a hundred percent knowledge of, of Jesus from the Bible and still not be there you still have to be able to to move into faith and and I think the only way we can help our our friends and family and those around us is to show them Jesus in our interactions. Hey Kip, I would uh, totally agree with that because uh even even Jesus uh um spoke here I was looking for the right verse uh verse 28 so Jesus said to them when you have lifted up the son of man which will eventually get to the point of his crucifixion but he says uh then you will know that i am he and that i do nothing on my own authority uh, i don't know how many times we've talked about it in h and h and on wednesday nights and on sunday messages here at, at sandy point but you know we're talking about knowledge we're talking about faith we're talking about understanding but but joy is right i can believe in something and still not you know, fully understand it. I can understand something and still not believe it. It still comes down to obedience, and obedience is always about surrendering my will to the will of another. And and that that is so very important that we grab a hold of that. 
And Pastor Lemer is right when he talks about the conflict, uh, not really the conflict, but the, the difficulty of how can Jesus be both fully human and fully God, you know, fully humanity, but also fully, you know, deity at the same time. Well, in his humanity, he was giving us an example of, I'm only going to do what the father tells me to do. I'm only going to do what my father tells me to do. And that's, that is a, that is a tremendous example of placing myself or, or placing oneself under the authority of God. You, you, this is what James was talking about. You tell me you got faith, show me your faith by your obedience. He uses the word works, but you could use the word obedience. I mean, it would fit. You know, so uh, if Jesus can do that, then we can pray and say, Lord, help us to do the same. Help us to submit and surrender to your authority. So I like your word obedience, because I think that is more in the spirit of what James was trying to get across. But yeah. agreed. Uh, agreed. Yeah, it, it, the humility of Jesus has come through in all his teaching, especially in John, because John yeah. is focusing on a lot of that, where, yeah. yeah, he's God, but he's in human form, and he is going to be, uh, he, he is totally surrendered to the Father and the Father's will in his humanity. Uh, you know, he could have claimed all these things under his own, because he's still God, yeah. but it's a great example to us because that's the only way to really be a follower of Jesus is to totally surrender my control and my will to the only one that actually has control over anything, which is Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Anything else? Pastor Lemar, would you close us with a prayer? Yeah. Yeah. Can we pray? Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank you for the benefit of serving you today. Thank you for Punla family, Pastor Barry Kip, and uh, the rest of the family, Pastor Gary, and uh, the rest of Filipino pastors who are here. Thank you, Father, for enabling us to gather as, as a family, as a corporate um, organization, oh God, though, though we are geographically uh, apart, but uh, you meant us together here in virtual online um, uh devotion and meeting oh god thank you for the resources that you continually put in our hands because of the love for the ministry thank you father for the blessings uh, for the numerous um uh visions that we have oh god for for the expansion of the ministry for evangelizing people for handling the great commission that you have given our shoulders oh god thank you dear father for for the resources that you have continually blessed upon us Oh God, we also ask for the for your guidance and for your blessing for the plans and visions ahead of us. Oh God, especially also for the coming home in the Philippines of uh, the Werman family. Yes. Oh God, thank you for for enabling them, for giving them a a very discounted fare and uh, a, a opportunity to come. Oh God, with le lesser expenses. Oh God, thank you very much for enabling them to visit our place here in the Bicol region, in the place that uh, they have projects. Thank you, dear Father, for all the things that you have given us. We cannot ask you for more because you are more than enough. Your presence to our ministry is more than enough for us to rejoice, to give glory to you. Thank you, dear Father, also for the John chapter 8, for giving us another inspirational yes, uh, messages, oh God, from our devotions and sharing. Thank you for using each one of us to give the hints and the peace of mind and the blessings that we have taken from the verses that you have given us. Lord, there is so much for us in store because you are the god of miracles god of surprises thank you dear father we give all the glory to you in jesus name we pray amen 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 thank you sir amen. thank you god bless you thank you thank you have a good day you guys yeah thank you okay, lord thank bless you all yeah. yeah thank you god bless uh -huh.